Do you have books you love but don't find really pretty? Or do you want all your books to have the same aesthetic? This mini series is made for you. Basically, we are going to transform these Bridgerton books into this. In the last video, I showed you how to decorate your edges with gold that hide a beautiful painting under it. So if you want to see how to do that, I will leave the link in the description below or in the little eye on the top right corner of this video. In this episode, however, we are going to get rid of those paperback covers and create hard covers to replace them with and it is surprisingly easy. Finally, in the next episode, I will show you how to customize those new cover we are going to make in this episode. So if you're not already, be sure to subscribe and click the bell button. Hi, my name is Lula Cust, and if you love craft, DIY or stationary reviews, you are in the right place because this is what this channel is all about. Okay, let's start. The first step to replace the paperbacks covers of our books with the most professional result is to remove those covers. To make that process easier, I like to use an iron to heat the glue that holds the covers to the book. And if you do so as well, do not forget to use oven paper to protect your iron and your book. Now that the paperback covers are out of the way, we are left with what is called the text block. We will need to reinforce it with end papers before we can make the hot covers. To do those end papers, we will need, well, paper, obviously, in the color of your choice. I went with white. You need your paper to be big enough so it's the same size of your book when folded into. If your paper is bigger than your book, it's fine. It's actually easier to have a bigger paper than our book. For a better and long lasting result, try to fold your paper with its grain. To know which way is that, Bend lightly your paper horizontally and then vertically and the way that it bends the easiest is the way you want to fold your paper. You will need two of those for each book you are customizing. One for the front and one for the back. Once we have our end papers, it's time to attach them by gluing them to our book. To do so, take a scrap piece of paper and place it on top of your text block, leaving just 5 to 8 millimeters to the spine. Then apply glue just there. Now remove your scrap paper and you will be left with a 5 to 8 millimeter wide stripe of glue and it's where we're gonna glue our end paper. So place your paper down with the folded edge right against the spine, just like this, and press really firmly so you're sure it's glued down. Now flip over your text block and with an X-Acto knife and really carefully cut off the excess paper. For the other side, repeat the exact same process. So fold, glue, press, flip and cut. For a better and long lasting result, place your block into your book press or on the weight for at least an hour. Now we want to reinforce the spine. So I cut a piece of thin fabric. If you don't have any lying around, you can just use paper, but it's better to have a thin fabric. By the way, we are not going to see it, so if it's ugly, it's, it's not a problem. So I glued it down to the spine and over the end covers and let the glue dry. While it's drying, we can prepare our hard covers. For that, we will need to measure our text block. Write down the height, width and thickness of your book. On a cardboard that is at least 3 mm thick, mark and cut three rectangles. One that will be used for the front covers, one that will be the spine and the last one will be the back cover. The front and back covers will need to be the same width as our text block 
but we will add eight millimeters to the height. And the same thing goes for the spine. So same thickness as the spine of the book, but eight millimeter higher. I also cut two strips of three millimeters each to help me with the next step, which is taping our cardboard pieces together. To do that, with a straight edge, place the three pieces side by side with the thinner one being the spine one in the middle and space them with the two thin pieces between each of those to have a three millimeter gap between the two covers and the spine. Carefully remove the thin piece and tape down the three left. Basically what we just did is to make the bones of our cover and now it's time to choose the skin. So basically we are going to choose the material we want to use for our cover. In this video I will use linen doubled with paper. I found it in my local bookbinding store, but you can also use regular fabric as I did on my DIY bullet journal video. Just be careful with that because the glue is more likely to go through the fabric. You can also use paper, but that is a whole other technique as you need to reinforce the folding part of your cover. Tell me in the comment if you want me to make a video about that. Okay, so now that you have your fabric, Place it good side down on your work table, place your cover on top of it and mark 2 to 3 centimeters all around it. This is where you are going to cut it. Great! We now have all the elements we need to assemble our hard cover. To do that, glue the spine on your cardboard piece element and glue it right in the middle of your fabric. Do not glue your covers yet. To glue your covers, take your text block, that should be dry by now, and place it so when you close your cover on it, the spines, so the one of your text block and the one of your cover, lines up like so. With the cardboard still on your text block, remove the fabric and apply a thin coat of glue on your cardboard, going all the way to the edges. I use tacky glue, which is uh, very cheap and can be found in any craft store, but white glue or even wood glue works perfectly well too. A thin coat is enough. If you don't have a fabric double with paper, try to make a really thin and uniform coat so it doesn't go through your fabric. Now you can close your fabric on top of your cardboard and press it down real nice, especially on the folding part. Open it and press it down again, making sure you get rid of all these air bubbles and Again, be careful on the folding part. For the other side, repeat the exact same process. Now to fold the edges. It's really simple. Just cut the corners with a 45 degrees angle, leaving three millimeters of fabric from the edge. Glue the rest to the side of the covers. Again, when you apply the glue, make sure you go all the way to the edges. And to make sure you have the nicest edge possible, fold them like this, using the covers instead of the fabric to press it down. Do this for the four edges and voila, you're gonna see that the corners are gonna make themselves. After that, place your text block into your cover and press it down on your press for at least an hour. Perfect, we now have a workable text block and our hardcover. All that is left to do is to attach them together. If you want to decorate your covers, now will be the perfect time to do so. I will show you how I did mine in the next episode. Okay, to attach your covers to your book, nothing is easier. Put your text block inside the cover and check, triple check if it's in the right way. Once you are sure, make sure also to line up your text block with your hard cover and open this cover. Take a scrap piece of paper and place it under the very first page uh, to protect your text block from the glue. Apply glue on the whole surface except the first centimeters to the spine. It is really important to leave that space without the glue because if you do glue it down you won't be able to open your book all the way flat. 
Again, make sure the glue goes all the way to the edges, of course, except the spine this time. It's really important to have a long lasting result and project. Replace the scrap piece of paper with a clean one and close your cover on your book. Leave the clean piece of paper inside so it can absorb the moisture of the glue as it dries in the press. Before putting it in the press, repeat the same steps for the other side and you have it, you have your book. I know it may be really tempting to start playing with it, but place it under the press for at least three hours. It's better of a night, but I know it's really hard to wait. And ta-da! Your brand new and handmade hardcover book. Congratulations! Thank you for watching. If you want to see how I made the gilded edges with the hidden painting, or want to see how I decorated my covers, the links will be in the description below or in the little eye on the top right corner of this video. You can also click on either of these boxes. Okay, take care, bye bye.